tool. How's MainNet doing? Any problems, concerns? I haven't seen anything myself. I haven't heard of anything. Always a good thing. No news is good news. Um, sorry, what was that? Uh, yeah, are you running um, the release the RC2? I am not, um, but I should do that. I'm going to spin up a node from Genesis on the foundation servers. Okay. I should make a note to do that right now. Yeah, I always do that before we release. Um, did we ever figure out what was causing the uh, the testnet DDoS now that we have the HTTP logs in the RC2 release? Um, I did not uh, look if the issue uh, uh, have been reproduced, but I can yeah I can look into that. Um, is is DevOps at uh, at Hero running RC2 nodes? Yeah, so all the Test net nodes are RC2, and we also have the mainnet mock miner running RC2. That's good. That's good. So, so one small thing, not really a concern, but just in info. Um, I don't think that we start, I don't think that we tested RC2 from Genesis. Um, so was that was that desired? Yeah, we should definitely do this every release. Okay, so um, I'm wondering like which one of our nodes we should remove the disk from um, so that it, like on every test, it, it's always from Genesis, maybe the mock miner. Probably best. Yeah, you, you wanna do it with a node that's not currently servicing public requests. Okay, then uh, I could I could do that. Um, I don't know, I don't know how much it'll, catch up before we do the release though. Um, I think we're we... blocking, so however long it takes. Okay. Like it does, it's no good to release a piece of uh, node software that can't boot. Right. Do um, we want to wait until it's fully synced or is like 50% yes. synced? Okay. Yeah, all of it. Like nothing ruins a blockchain, like finding out that, oh shit, we can't recover the chain state because we're missing the block for some reason. Mm. It shouldn't take that long, like maybe a day. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow morning, um, it should be mostly done if not already done. Yeah, but it, it needs to catch up. Like, and that's not something we can skimp on. Um, so we don't know what's causing the DDoS issue. It's not showing up in the logs or anything. Um, have we have we tried to look into it? I can look. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can look into this um, after the call. All right, sounds good. Um, other than that, like, how are we doing on on two point zero point eleven point one? Um, are we just waiting now to make sure, is this, is this the last thing? Like just make sure it boots from Genesis. There's no other outstanding PRs that have to make yeah. it in. I didn't see any. Yeah, there's no outstanding PR. So we're just like making sure that um, the nodes can run. Uh, uh, yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah, so I, I think we're gonna reset the, um, mainnet mock miner and maybe we we can also wait on your green light trude uh, like as soon as you have like a working node we can maybe um, announce the release like wrap up everything and announce yep i'll, I'll bring up an rc2 node um, after this call um, I, I have i have my i have the vms the foundation set up to just do this like they can currently be running a mainnet node while spinning up a second one So that's good. Um, so that, that release is imminent. Let's go ahead and uh, run through the board. Cool. Um, is this ready for merge now, Aaron? Has this been approved sufficiently? I think it has, yeah, I can, I can merge that. Awesome. I see that this just landed. 
slice function looking forward? Uh, yeah, I think I'm missing the cost, but yeah, um, cost and, and some cleaning, I think, but yeah, um, I should be able to open the chart today. Awesome. So just, just the, uh, the cost analysis, I want to say, should just be like, you know, um, linear in the, the size of the slice requested, I would think, right? I think the tricky part is that um, it's handling 2.1 versioning. Yes, um, you would need, that would need to hook into Aaron's PR. I think it, I think it already does, but my, my PR is maybe not that explanatory when it comes to uh, dealing with the cost differences. Um, oh, okay, yeah, we should get that figured out. Um, I can't tell from this view, but this is opened against Aaron's PR, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I guess we'll, we'll work that out then in the comments section. Um, got a PR from Greg here um, for documentation. I think the only feedback is that we're just waiting for uh, a better example. Yeah. Cool, and then we have 2.0.11. That'll be out as soon as we can verify we can spin up nodes. Um, minor relevant Prometheus metrics. Is this uh, linked to a PR somewhere? Yes, and we can close this. This was merged. Oh, awesome. Glad to see it. Uh, microblock data missing from event emitter while syncing. Uh, that's this issue down here, right? This PR? Yeah, it's like all really, there's like three issues together in one PR. Sweet. Um, I think I think my feedback's been addressed. Um, it was just the uh, don't panic feedback that I think it's already planned to do. You were right, Havitra. Um, the, the the sortition method that that it's being called won't panic if the uh, the snapshots not on a valid POX fork. Um, I just prefer that if panics if we do panic, it's only um, a panic due to something that's truly unrecoverable. Where like trying to soldier on is worse, like in, like in, in consensus code. Yep, that, that makes complete sense. So, so it makes sense for me to like do an option and like not always return it. Okay. Yeah, like the worst that will happen by soldiering on here is that a downstream event observer, if this code is reached, um, might not receive all events. But that's uh, um, that that's a better error. It's still bad. It's just a better error than like the chain crashing because because that chances are all the nodes will crash at the same time if they hit that kind of problem. Yep. All right. That makes sense. Cool. Um, launch testnet via stacks node. Oh, that's just, uh, yeah, that's a one line change. We have to go get the guy to sign off on. Um, Aaron, is this gonna make, is this gonna make any, is this uh, something that you're still working on? The uh, um, LCOV compatible reporting coverage? It's something I should very much be working on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't see your face <laughs> smiling or are you upset? Uh, I'm smiling, but I'm also upset. <laughs> uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, it's it really just touches. It's not consensus breaking, right? We can merge it whenever, right? Correct. It's it's not consensus breaking. Hopefully, like it actually like it touches clarity code. Um, so it is like I would say pretty essential to be careful with the PR. Um, uh, so it's, but, uh, um, it's all in draft status though. What what more would you like to do with it? Um, so it should actually probably not be in draft status. There was some question about whether or not um, this was how we wanted to do this um, coverage reporting or like what it does is outputs these trace files and then there's another command that sort of bundles them up into LCOV. Um, but I think that the decision was like, this works for now. And unless we need to do something else, we'll, we'll change it. Um, so that aspect of it is fine. Um, but uh, there are just like a ton of conflicts mm -hmm. um, that need to be addressed now um, because this touched a lot of stuff in the Clarity CLI uh, module, oh, which yeah. changed a lot with yeah. the JSON changes so that got overhauled pretty yeah. significantly in the last release yeah um okay um 
maybe a different question here could be like, um, to, to what extent do we expect clarinet to be used over clarity CLI? Because it might make sense for, for this just, just be reopened um, or at least just the, the VM parts kept and the CLI parts dropped in favor of making it so that uh, clarinet can do it. Uh, yeah, that might be that might be the right approach. Because that should be uh, the conflicts at least. Yeah. I'm definitely planning on stealing uh, this term set. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'll, that's what I'll do. I'll I'll knock out the changes in Clarity CLI, and then um, the conflicts should be easier to address. So cool. yeah, and then like if you want to just make like a, a little utility module or something that contains all the stuff that Luda would need to hook into from Clarinet, that might just be the end of it. Yep. Sweet. Um, this I guess is still in a holding pattern with the ARC64 Apple. Um, I should just close this at this point because we're not gonna be gating contract calls. We're gonna be using the uh, Clarity VM Epoch, so I'll just go ahead and close that. Um, I'm gonna review this hopefully today. Um, I'm almost done with 1805. Once that's out of the way, I can review. Oh, this, this is a draft. Oh, still a draft? Yeah, yeah. This is where I'm like sort of actively working on the POX auto unlock stuff. I see. Um, um, which is the PR then that uh, Ludo was building off of for the uh, 2.1 Epoch switch? Um, that's like Clarity version two or something. Like it's. So it's is, that a, is that a v, is that a PR or is that just a branch right yeah, now? Yeah, it's a PR. Oh, where is it? Might not be on the board. Oh, okay. Oh, this one here? Yeah. All right, just add that to the board. That's weird, it's supposed to be on, well, I'll just put it on both. Maybe it's because it's in progress. Don't know. I don't know, GitHub can be shitty. All right, um, in progress, I hope to have a PR for this out finally. Tonight, um, I just have one test that is still failing, but I know it's the test's problem and not the code's problem. And then we don't have to worry. Then, you know, one two point one comes around, we won't have to worry about someone mining an anchor block and not releasing it. And that will make me sleep better at night. Um, RESTful API for querying the blockchain status. Um, Pavithra, how are we doing on this? I didn't work on this in the last week, so still work in progress. All righty. Um, reliability improvements, accurate runtime costs. How are we doing on this? Um, Chait, also put Pavithra. Do you want to, you want to be on this as well? I think you and me are working together on this. Yeah, I think Reed onboarded me to this like last Thursday. Okay. Yeah, this is this is coming along. Um, not much to uh, report, but we're we're working our way through it. Sounds good. Um. Oh, this is actually closed. Um, this is already shipped in two point in uh, RC two. So we log the uh, peer address. Um, contract, sorry, it's new keyword to compare um, buffers. I guess this is still in progress, right, Leo? Uh, yeah. Actually, can you move it back to the the cloud because I might not be prioritizing this one. Already. Um, so is uh, Greg taking this one here? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, new issues. Oh, here he is. Let's see a bunch of things in chat here. So I noticed a uh, bug in the BNS contract that we can fix in 2.1. Uh, when you renew, and I don't know if this is like publicly known already somewhere else. Um, I just, um, it was reported to me by um, Yolocom, who's working on implementing a DID implementation for us. Um, they noticed that uh, when you renew a name, uh, the new owner isn't being honored. Um, the code just doesn't transfer the name. So we can repair this in 2.1. We can do a similar trick we're doing with BNS and just make it so that 
we replaced the contract. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, that, that shouldn't be as risky as what we're doing with POX uh, because um, none of the uh, data needs to be ported over. It's just the, well, actually shit. Do we, we might yeah. have Yeah, it's worse because all this, like we want to keep the state of PNS1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how, how, I know that there's other problems like in DNS, like name renewal doesn't um, charge you money either. Yeah. Um, how, would we, how would we like to fix this? I, I, don't, I think that we need to like open a discussion topic for BNS, uh, BNS upgrade um, schemes. Cause like, yeah, there, there's a couple approaches that reduce pain. Um, but the, the like the key difference between like POX and BNS is like in POX, what we're gonna do is we're gonna force everybody to like pay to move their data over. Right. And in BNS, I think if we did that, that would just be the end of BNS. I, I agree. We can't force that to happen. Yeah. So I did have like a crazy, well, not crazy, crazy, but just like a idea that might make this work. Um, in the general, in, in the, sorry, in the very specific case where if all you are trying to do is change a contract's um, function bodies, but not change the data or change the uh, function signatures, it might be safe just to replace the code body as like part of a part of the hard fork. Oh, I, I, I don't want to think about that. You don't want to think about that? Yeah. Um... Yeah, because like um, um, basically all of the contract metadata and the stuff being committed to is the contract hash. Oh, got it. Um, yeah, that would be painful. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, talk about it more in discussion then. Yep, yep. Cool. Um, got this issue from the community. I believe Elnow is working with uh, um, Freehold to implement uh, some project of theirs, City Coins. Um, Anyway, they've been opening issues this whole weekend about uh, things in clarity they wish were better. Uh, filter function should have an additional parameter for filter conditions. I guess what's being asked for here is a change to the filter function itself. Um, I'd have to think about this. I don't think we're gonna do it just because it's not clear that he can't this person can't solve the problem that they're trying to solve. Yeah, you, you, you almost always can, um, but like, I don't know. This is basically like, it's annoying that we don't have anonymous functions. Yeah, that's more or less the, the gist of it. Um, filter funk list, filter condition data. I mean, you could do like a filter on a fold or something where the, the fold generates a list of true or false. Yeah, I don't know. We, if, if, any, if anyone feels inspired, feel free to reply to that. Um, another issue I raised, I, I think I replied to this correctly, um, is that if you don't use a let binding to, to declare variables, but instead just you know load data out of a map or out of a data variable in place, I think you give an example of uh, um, two contracts which do this. Um, this guy was able to show that you um, can reduce your runtime cost by like half or so by not having a let binding in his simple example, but he's increasing the uh, read length by almost the same amount. He's like doubling it. So it's not clear that he's actually gained anything by doing this. He's just traded one um, resource for another here. Is that- Yeah, I, I think this is a symptom of like poor, um execution cost uh, um, constants. Like looking up a let binding is not free. Um, not. Whereas like uh, reading a literal value into, uh, it, into an apply is free with whatever the read length. Um, so like in some sense it is cheaper like and Compilers will actually do this optimization sometimes. It's 
yeah. See, that, that's the, um, I guess like the, the, the understanding I'm lacking here is it, because runtime is a more abundant resource than read length, you should probably sacrifice uh, runtime to get more read length, I would think. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's just like, I don't know, right now, a lot of our constants are pretty out of whack. So like, I don't know, yeah. they're probably getting charged like 10,000 runtime every time they uh, read a let variable. Yeah, that could, that's basically no IO, like that could be free basically. Or like, it could be like, like nominal, nominally small cost, like one runtime or like Correct. or something. Yeah, we don't want to encourage people to just inline everything. Yes. Okay, this is a fun one because this is actually a consensus bug that these guys discovered by accident. It's not a, a stop the world, drop everything and fix consensus bug, thankfully, but it is a bug in the analysis pass of the Clarity VM. Um, you can declare functions and then have other functions call those public functions and give them the wrong number of arguments and it will type check correctly. Um, this guy is complaining that Clarity CLI and Clarinet don't report these errors. And the reason they don't report these errors is because they both use the very same VM to do the, the uh, analysis check. And the very same VM that's um, processing all your smart contracts on the main chain is um, accidentally allowing these contracts to be instantiated. Uh, thankfully, it's not a, uh, the reason why it's not like a show stopping problem is because um, even if you did mine such a transaction that creates an invalid contract, you can't call it. Like the act of calling it will lead to a, a runtime check unchecked error, which in our case will cause the whole block to be invalid. So miners aren't going to inadvertently pick up a transaction that does a bad pro contract call. At least not, not unless they want to forfeit their coin base. Um, but nevertheless, it is something we will want to fix in 2.1. I haven't talked about it on the public issue here, but I, I'll go ahead and do that after this call. Um, we need to make it so that the analysis pass is gated so that we preserve this old behavior in the 2.0 epoch, but we make sure to statically check um, argument counts as well as argument types for public function calls in the 2.1 analysis pass. Um, I see we have a whole bunch of issues that were opened for static analysis. Um, do you wanna talk about these briefly, Pavithra? Yeah, um, I mean, I basically just like went through our initial spec doc and broke it up the way Aaron broke it up and put the tasks in. And I mean, we're definitely like putting it off to the side for, for now to do stacks 2.1. So, yeah. Already. Um, I think this is the end of the issue list. I think I talked about this last time here. So, just switching over to the 2.0 board, the 2.1 board. So I mentioned earlier, this is hopefully going to be done today. We already talked about um, these two things here. And I'm not sure this is done, tolerate empty sortations in the prepare phase. Um, Aaron, you closed as a dupe, right? Yes, that's closed as a dupe. OK. Yeah, because I don't remember doing this. <laughs> it's a sign yeah, yeah, it's not, not done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so maybe whatever automation rule that uh, yeah, you closed it done. Up. Yes. Um, GitHub, how does it work? Um, okay, cool. Is there any update on these? Um, reliability improvements, accurate runtime costs. We just talked about that. Um, Epoch switch and stance the 2.1 contract. Aaron, you're working on this right now, right? Yep. Cool. Um, buffer to and from integers. We just talked about that. Um, string ASCII and string UTF-8. This is kind of a related issue. Um, they're both uh, sequence types under the hood. They just require different parsing rules. Um, uh, Greg, are you also working on this one? Should I assign you? You could assign me. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can assign me. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, to do, it, um, Aaron, is this part of the work you're doing? The stacks decrease as part of the new POX contract? Or is this a separate task that hasn't been started? Yeah, it's going to be a separate task. Uh, basically, all of the POX updates are kind of separated out like the big change that's going to be implemented in this is the auto unlock i see yeah is there an issue open for the auto unlock um 
I'm not actually sure if one exists. Hold on, let me try and find it. Yeah. It's okay if there isn't, we could just add it to the, the body of the issue. Maybe it's this one, unlock, relock, or is that the... I think that might be it, yeah. Okay, so this is in progress right now? Yes, and... Excellent. And sign myself. Cool, cool. Um, once I have 1805 finished, I will uh, switch over to working on the mining track. So I'll move those to in progress as soon as that happens. Um, is this, oh, I think we talked briefly about this. Um, are we gating, we're getting access to the default cost functions. Is there code written for this somewhere? Is this part of one of your PRs, Aaron? Um, no, this isn't part of one of my PRs. Um, um, but that's something that Ludo is going to need for slice, right? Um, I'm not sure. This is like, uh, this issue refers to changing the current default cost constants. Yeah. Um, which will probably actually be dealt with differently than adding new cost functions. Like adding, yeah, uh, adding new cost functions may just require something else. Like we add a new um, cost contract that only has the new cost functions in it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I don't think we have an issue for that though. Let me just go ahead and make one. Not a note, an actual honest to God issue. else on this? All right, went through the boards. Um, anything else to discuss on any topic at all? Going once, twice. I see some chat items. Let me just pull those up here. All right, cool. I'll stop recording.